Hello and welcome to AV Cyberactive. Today we're going to study the basics of the Federated Identity Protocol that is SAML or SAML in short. Before you proceed with the video, I'd highly recommend you check out my previous video and learn how IAAA works, that is identification, authentication, authorization and auditing. The SAML protocol by itself isn't a new concept, it was developed first and way back in November 2002 with the version 1.0. Further developments have been made in SAML version 1.1 in September 2003 and the latest version that we have is the SAML version 2.0, officially been recognized since March of 2005. Now have you ever wondered when you try to log into an application within your organization and you don't need to enter your username and passwords for all the different applications that you have. This is all handled in the background through a single sign-on technology, although there are many technologies available. Today we're going to talk going to talk about only SAML, that is security assertion markup language, that works on an XML-based assertion. So SAML is in security assertion markup language and it is an open standard. And remember this, it is used for exchanging authentication information and it uses XML-based markup language for security assertions. We're going to study about the assertions part a bit later in this video. There are three main entities in the SAML protocol. They are the user or the browser itself uh, that is requesting for the application or the web-based application. There is this identity provider, the identity which holds the username, password and authorizes the user that they are legitimate. And then the third one is the service provider who has the actual application or which is hosting the actual service or the application. Now for the user to access the application, the identity provider must first pass on a token to the service provider. This is done because there's already a pre-established trust relationship between the identity provider and the service provider. This has to be done not just in time, but even before the entire SAML or SSO process is validated. In the first step, the user agent or the user's browser is first authenticated and sends their username and password to the IDP or the identity provider. Once it is authenticated, the identity provider generates a SAML assertion or a token. This token has a seal of approval from the identity provider and its own signature. It also has the username, the email address, the first name, last name and a few more details that validate the user is authentic. Now this assertion is sent to the service provider and the service provider since there is already a pre-existing trust relationship with the identity provider it allows the user agent or the user application access or access to its resources now this is where all the magic happens since the user is already authenticated and authorized to access certain applications the same token can be used to access other service providers or other applications this is how the user gets a very seamless experience and doesn't have to log in again and again to different applications if they have or they maintain a different database of username and passwords. Just signing in once gives them the ability to single sign on into different applications. Since this makes it very easy for the user to log in and ask for resources from different applications, Exploiters or threat actors would also like to use this as an exploit technique. We shall discuss two most commonly used attacks against SSO federated identity. Number one, XML injection. Since there's already existing trust relationship between the identity provider and the service provider, attackers might try to attempt to inject malicious XML content into SAML or SAML messages to manipulate or exploit the processing of those messages but of course by the identity provider and the service provider. To help mitigate this you would have to do a proper input validation and output encoding. 
And the second attack vector being the most common one, that is man in the middle attack. An attacker tries to intercept the communication between the identity provider and the service provider. This allows them to capture and manipulate SAML assertions. If the attackers get hold of the SAML assertions or the XML, the data which is being transmitted, they might be able to intercept the data if it's in plain text and manipulate it so that the service provider reads it as if it's coming from a legitimate user and allowing them to capture or manipulate SAML assertions. To mitigate this, encrypting the entire channel like encryption and secure channels like HTTPS can help mitigate this risk. And there you have it an exploration into SAML and the potential exploits that can target it. While SAML is a powerful tool for enhancing user experience and security, understanding its vulnerabilities is also crucial to mitigate its risk. Stay vigilant and implement the right security measures and keep learning. If you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more tech insights. Thank you for tuning in and until next time, stay secure. Bye now.